And I'd like to highlight in my uh, remarks the, the importance of uh, addressing the Syria, uh, Syrian crisis uh, from a humanitarian perspective. But, and why is it important for us in Chicago and Illinois, for our community to be aware of the Syrian situation, and also uh, to pressure our government in order to have more proactive policy towards Syria, because so far our policy has not been leading to um, positive results on the ground. Um, as uh, yes, I mentioned, uh, there are many Syrian Americans in the Chicago area. Uh, there are a large group of vibrant Syrian Americans. Uh, many of them are physicians, architects, attorneys, uh, small business owners, and uh, they are all concerned about what's happening in Syria. Um, the community at large in Chicago, uh, whether it's the faith community or the religious community, the Arab community, uh, Muslims and Christians and the Muslim community are interested in what's happening in Syria because it's a humanitarian catastrophe. Uh, what's happening in Syria is really a humanitarian catastrophe. Um, if we're looking at today's uh, announcement from the United Nations uh, Refugee Agency, UNHCR, the number of uh, refugees, Syrian refugees, in the four neighboring countries of Syria exceeded 213,000 today. Uh, UNHCR expected that number to be, for the whole year, 185,000. Today we have more than 213,000 Syrian refugees in four countries, and these are registered uh, refugees. And if you add it to them, the unregistered refugees, that number will exceed more than 300,000. The hospital next door was owned by a private, friendly friend, physician, and her nephew. And they went the following week and just destroyed the hospital because the hospital was known for treating people, demonstrators. That's in the neighborhood in Sharaat next to Baba Am, where most of the demonstrations were happening daily. And I met those young physicians and they just told me stories and stories how they went on to destroy every equipment in the hospital, not allowing to have the hospital to function. So really, we, to tie it all together, we really ask to hear we all talk about the truth, and the truth is a very, very, very fun word to play with. But the media also, by focusing on the daily details, sometimes lose focus on the big picture. Bashar Assad, everybody knew before the revolution that he's a killer regime. He had no, didn't spare any way to jailing people, torturing people. His father killed all his comrades who brought him to power and let them die in prison. And he did the same thing in 82. So really, I don't want us to lose focus of what has been happening by concentrating on this detail and that detail. The Syrian people had offered their blood and asking for freedom and dignity. They're not asking for anything more. And, we, and they deserve from all of us humanity, regardless of our political, religious, whatever belief, we all believe in humanity that this killing has to stop. And the international community has failed so far to offer any solution. And no-fly zone has been circulated from the beginning. But it's time really for us to tell all the supporting countries of Bashar al-Assad killing innocent people. Women and children is not part of any political game. Killing children, children don't carry weapons. You cannot dispute the fact that there are children dying in Syria every day. You don't need to read a newspaper or such a newspaper or any organization. The news fills the pages every day. So please, 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 show the real story when you write about it. Lines are not coming in at all. They used to have makeshift hospitals inside to treat anybody who's wounded because they keep on shelling the area while it's besieged. And uh, a lot of these makeshift hospitals have had to close their doors down, which they were in basements of houses to be able to um, avoid the shelling, but they have run out of even the simplest uh, first aid supplies. So now people are, if they're not dying from hunger, if they're not being directly shelled and killed, um, they're dying from the simplest diseases and illnesses and even wounds that would be otherwise easily treated. Um, so this in this area, uh, my family is actually originally from there, and um, I've had some family members who were able to escape earlier, and now we've heard, um, actually I was able to confirm through some of the activists that I worked with, that um, the, the neighborhood where my family is from, um, most of the 
houses are gone. So most likely, you know, that house is gone, which seems in perspective to be one of the um, least significant problems. Um, I think it is, it, it's become a very dire situation, and this is only one example of what's going on all from Syria. Um, you know, we receive everyday pictures and appeals from, from the activists inside saying, you know, we have children here who are dying, and we don't know what to do with them. Um, we can't even provide them with baby formula for some of the children. I mean, they're being, being born there too. So um, we can only imagine what's going on in these areas. And uh, um, I can speak on this on a personal level because I'm in direct contact with, with the groups there. But I know it's going on in other cities too. Where I grew up. I've, I've seen the the door-to-door uh, -door arrest campaigns, the um, arrest and the shooting against any medical personnel who would attempt to, to aid the wounded. Um, also, I've seen, I've talked to people and seen people who told me stories about um, the crimes and the raids that are, were, were, were committed against the, the mosques, hospitals, and clinics. And um, right before I went, the, my cousin, my family lost a dear cousin in Syria who joined the army when he was 19 years old, thinking that he was serving his country. But shortly after the revolution started, he was forced to commit in, uh, crimes against human rights um, ordered by his leaders in the army. And when he refused to do so, he was shot in the neck, killed, protecting a group of children who were going to school. Today, the situation in Syria isn't just a revolution fighting against dictatorship. It's a, indeed a regime who is fighting, who is committing crimes against humanity. And in order for us to uphold the responsibility of protecting the Syrian people inside Syria, we call out the international community to pressure a no-fly zone among Syria to prevent a further rounds of violence um, against the civilians over there. Uh, had the most atrocious massacre committed against it and against its people by the Syrian Assad militias, by the Syrian regime's militias. You imagine waking up in the morning, walking outside in your streets to a big crime scene where teenagers, uh, three, four teenagers are shot in the head in, a, in an alley, an old man driving a truck with a bullet in the side of his head, a, a woman hunched over her baby, both killed in the middle of the street. People from Daya are recovering bodies as we speak today, and the death count is up to 440 people dead so far. This is the direct result of the brutality of the Syrian regime. Daraya and other areas in, the, uh, in, the, in Syria have been bombarded by air force by the Syrian regime. You have defenseless, densely populated areas against an air force machine that is bombarding them continuously. This has an enormous effect. This has an enormous effect, it had had an enormous effect over Syrian Americans across the United States, especially in Chicago because of the large Syrian and, and, and Arab and Muslim and Christian population. To the, to the extent that there, we have been mobilizing these communities and our allies to put uh, as much pressure as possible on our politicians to do the right thing, to respond to our demands our American citizens, as American citizens. What we are asking for unequivocally is a no-fly zone protect the Syrian defenseless population from the brutality and the madness of Bashar al-Assad and his killing machine. Unfortunately, our leadership, the administration, President Obama, uh, made some comments that were misconstrued by the international community and by specifically by the allies of Bashar al-Assad and Bashar al-Assad himself. He had said that using chemical weapons is a red line in, in, by, by the Syrian regime. The implication, unfortunately, that was not intended by our administration, by our president, is that Assad can do whatever he wants but 
for the use of chemical weapons. Unfortunately, that was echoed by the French president today. What we need our administration to do, unequivocally, very directly, is to state that there is a moral, human responsibility to protect the Syrian defenseless civilians from the madness of Bashar al-Assad Air Force. And the only way you, we can do that is by enforcing a no-fly zone. And convince them, persuade them, to stop their support of the Assad regime. That is another direct thing we can do, or do more efficiently and effectively, in addition to the no-fly zone and refugee assistance that is very much needed. She wrote on her Facebook saying, God, I'm okay if I die from a bullet or an explosion, but please, God, don't let my death be with a knife at the hand of one of the Shabiha. This is what the children of Syria today are hoping for, the most they are hoping for, is not to die by a knife at the hand of someone who walks into the privacy of their home and literally kill them with the knife. And this is a reality for, for, our own, for our own children, for our own nephews and nieces and brothers and sisters, not just someone else that we are hearing about. And I'm not unique. We have hundreds of thousands of Syrian Americans today that are receiving those kind of calls or reading those kind of statements on, on the internet. So it's very important for us to call our government to stand up for the statements that we have made all along of protecting civilians, of not allowing genocide, not allowing massacres. And, and today's ask is the least we can do. That is providing the necessary support and, and, and including uh, an off-fly zone to make sure that, that the civilian population in Syria is not uh, uh, killed with impunity, with uh, uh, airplanes, with uh, people that are, that are basically having tanks and, and, and mortars with no response whatsoever to protect this uh, population. Thank you very much.